The Northwest Territories, beautiful, rugged, wild, tranquil. A land of contrast and mystery, rich in culture and tradition. A land carved by rivers and pooled by thousands of lakes, where ancient mountains rise above a vast boreal forest and majestic icebergs drift silently across a cool blue sea. It is a land teeming with life and expectation, a territory reborn and redefined as of April 1st, 1999. To mark the occasion and celebrate the dawning of a dynamic new era, three artists combined their creative talents to design and craft a new parliamentary mace. One that symbolizes the authority of government and embodies the richness and diversity of the people and land it represents. My name is Dolphus Cadu. I was born in Yalane. I'm a sculptor, painter. My name is Bill Nasigalovac. I'm originally from Tuktiaktak, and I'm a sculptor and a painter. My name is Allison Simi. I'm based in Ottawa. I'm a jeweler and more recently a sculptor. The mace is 57 and a half inches long. At the top end, there's a diamond that sits right in the middle of the crown. And it, the diamond is from the Yell Knife period. It's um, one of the first major pieces of diamond that has come out from the territories. The shaft uh, is made out of bronze. It's a stylized narwhal tusk. Although we don't have any narwhals in our area, the previous mace was made out of uh, narwhal tusks, and it's, it's our way of, of honoring the previous mace. Like this, an orb, um, circular um, orb, <laughs> I guess it is called, and uh, that represents like the, the people and uh, the world. We incorporated the snowflake design, the six-sided figure, and uh, I think that's one of the unique things. It's getting away from, um, you know, the crown, and we're doing a snowflake that represents a crown or vice versa. I was in a bookstore and I found a a book of photographs of the snowflakes um, that were, had been done, I guess, over the last century by, by one individual. And just as a designer, I was astounded. It took me about eight models to work that out, to even just get to the rough idea of where I needed it to go. It's got to be like slotted right in so that he feels it. When he puts it in there, it feels like it's he okay. Could put the, it's attached. He could put the mace down. Here. From that stage, it went to, um, well, the refinement, the refinements of the design. The three of us sat down and just countless varieties of shape and line and straight here and curved there, and it was really quite subtle. But that's what we were trying to do, is we were just trying to tweak it together. So we did that, again, in, in model form. And from there, um, that was when Lois got involved, and we had asked her if she would be willing to look at the design, make sure that it's, that it's feasible. Lois will um, take over and do the sort of the very final, final refinements on the shape, because that's where all the years of experience come in, to get it exactly right. I don't normally do it this way, but I think it's a good way. <laughs> How do you normally do it? Just touch it when it's hot enough. Oh. Oh, the languages then will be, um, it'll be a band that separates the head of the mace and Allison's um, snowflake design. 
that's where all the official languages of the territories is written. And what's written on there is one land, many voices. I think what we're trying to do is like um, the visual imagery, which you don't really find in a lot of the mesas. Uh, I think that's another unique aspect of it. And what you'll see is like six panels representing the th uh, three or four different cultures, like you have the Denny, Métis, Euro Canadians, Inuit Valuet. Yeah, so all the cultures are represented, um, the land, the water, and the environments, and, and the animals are depicted in these six panels that we're replacing them. Marble from the territories, marble from the Young Knife Precambrian Shield area. They have really unique coloration. You know, they have a pinkish purple type of color. Below the head and above the foot, there's a two inch strip of bead work and also uh, quill work. They're small areas, but I think they're really, they're really important because in their making, it's, it's yet another totally different set of skills, history, tradition that would have gone into the making of those. I have a lot of respect for that. Delta braid is usually made out of a cloth, but we were trying to incorporate beadwork and we were trying to incorporate delta braid, but we didn't have any other place where we could use the beadwork, so we've actually had beadwork in the delta braid design. This section of the mace, um, we're representing the land of the Western Territory. And what we have is the mountain scene that goes into the foothills, that goes into Precambrian Shield type of rock, and it slowly drifts into the delta and into the tundra. And then because it's in a circular design, it comes back again as, as a mountain scene again. On each side of the foot, we have bodies of water one side of it is the Great Slave Lake and the other side is the Great Bear Lake. And below it is, is icebergs which represent the Arctic Ocean, you know. And then just below that, even below that, you have these two little tips of land masses. And one of them is um, Banks Island, the other is Victoria Island. If you look closely, uh, just before the Mackenzie Delta, we have two little dots there, and that represents the Pingus of Taktehaktek area, where I'm from. To me, the most unique part of the mace is, the, is what we can't see, is the, is the pebbles that are within the, the mace. And what we've done is we've taken pebbles from each community, all 33 communities of the Western Territory, and we've incorporated them into the mace so the pebbles actually make noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It represents the voices of the people, you know? And the whole idea behind it was like really inspiring and yeah, so we just went with that idea. And I think for myself, it's the most unique part of it. Yeah. I thought it'd be a dollar. It's connections to people that are the most important. Um, the fact that you can hear these pebbles inside, when I think about that, my imagination just takes a leap. Someone has to lean over and pick that pebble up. And if you've ever been to the beach, you know, you're just looking down and something is gonna catch your eye and that's the one you're gonna lean over and pick up. Whoever it is who does that, you know, what was it? It was shiny, it was a color, it was a size, it was, who knows? It's a white marble with the Mackenzie River as a design. So it curves as it goes and spreads up into the delta and links all of the communities. 
and we've chosen white simply because we want to represent the ice of the North Icebergs, the snow, and um, our major landmark in the Western Territory is the Mackenzie River. It starts off as the Delta, it's carved in, and as you, as you go down the Mackenzie River, you will see the Great Bear Lake on one side, and, and you travel down, you see a Great Slave Lake, and then below the Great Slave Lake is the Hay River, and down to Fort Smith. <laughs>